this is the last part of our second segment for week four, and we're going to look at the switching losses on a MOSFET. In the last video, we looked at the conduction losses in the DC to DC converter, and we did not look at the switching loss in the MOSFET proper. In this video, we're going to cover that switching loss. If you'd like to take a further dive into this topical area, there's links provided in the video description below. Go ahead and check out those links for more information. Let's go over what we're going to cover in this video. First, we're going to look at the turn-on characteristics for an inductive load. We'll also look at the turn-off characteristics for an inductive load. Then we're going to plot the instantaneous power for both turn-on, turn-off. We'll also show where the conduction loss is during a whole switching period. And finally, we'll obtain an average switching loss for the MOSFET. Here's a quick overview of the DC to DC converter that we've been analyzing in the past videos. And here we can see the current flowing through the MOSFET, and it starts at the switching period where we have labeled T equals zero. And we see that the current ramps up from an, a minimum value to maximum value, and then the MOSFET turns off and then turns back on again. It's this turn on that we're going to look in more detail and expand. So here's an exploded view of what's happening in the MOSFET, and we're looking at the turn on. And we covered the turn on characteristics of the MOSFET in a couple of videos back. So go ahead and look back at those videos if you need to refresh on what's going on. But recall that for an inductive load, our drain voltage stayed clamped while our gate to source voltage started to rise, hit the Miller plateau, and then went back up to the final value. So for example, if our gate to source voltage was 10 volts and our threshold voltage was possibly one and a half to three volts, we would not see current conducting through the drain and source until we passed the threshold. It would continue to rise. It would come up to a point at which point the gate voltage holds constant during the Miller plateau and then rises up. So that's the turn on characteristic. I'm going to list three different times, T1, T2, and T3. The total turn on time, which I'll list as T sub on, is equal to T2 plus T3. T1 is the time it takes for our gate to source voltage to reach the threshold voltage. Once the gate to source voltage surpasses the threshold voltage, drain current will start to flow. Until the charge or the value of the voltage on the gate reaches the, the Miller plateau. So T2 is the time when the drain to source current starts to flow, reaches its maximum value, and then we reach the Miller Plateau. Finally, once we've reached the Miller Plateau, the drain to source voltage will start to drop or fall until it reaches a final value here and we are in conduction. This voltage, this small voltage, V, is equal to the drain to source current times the drain to source resistance. And then we're in conduction. The total time for turn on is T2 plus T3. This time is, is rather difficult to obtain, and I'll put an equation up on the screen for you to look at, and it's based on values that you can take off from the data sheet. One of the values that's sometimes difficult to obtain is 
the capacitor between the gate and drain, it is often wrapped up within what's called the input capacitance, CISS, which is CGD plus CGS. There are ways, however, to estimate that gate to drain capacitance. In a similar way, we can look at the turnoff characteristics or the turnoff time for the MOSFET. I'll label this time T4, T5, and T6. The total turnoff time is equal to T5 plus T6. T4 is the time it takes for the gate voltage to start to, to fall and the drain to source voltage will start to rise as it once it hits the Miller Plateau. The drain to source current stays constant until after the Miller Plateau is reached and then the drain to source current starts to fall. So the drain to source current falls during, period, during time T6. The voltage drain to source begins to rise as we're shutting the device off in period five. And again, I will put the, those equations up on the screen for you to review. One of the things to notice during the turn on time is that the voltage on the drain to source is clamped. And that is because the flyback diode is holding the source at zero volts or near zero volts while the flyback current is still allowing that diode to conduct and the drain to source current is starting to rise and until which point the drain to source current takes over all the load and the diode is no longer conducting then the drain to source voltage can start to decline and fall and what that will provide for us is an instantaneous power during the turn on time that goes up to a point I drain to source times V drain to source, and then falls back down over a period of T3 with again, a peak value of the product of these two. In a similar way, the current is clamped, if you will, while the voltage rises back up as, as the device is turning off. And the instantaneous power during turnoff is also equal to the drain to source voltage, whatever that is set to and our drain to source current. Now we can plot this for the, the buck converter and I'm going to exaggerate the scales slightly. There's our turn on switching loss. It has a peak value of VN times IO for the buck converter. Here's our conduction loss. And again, our scales are highly exaggerated in time. Typically, we're going to see switching periods that would be on the order of milliseconds to microseconds and turn on and turn off times that are on the order of 
tens of nanoseconds to hundreds of nanoseconds. And the average value of this area is the switching loss. So we can now derive an equation for the average value of the switching loss. That area on those triangles is one half the base. Times the height. And then if we divide by the total time, so the first term is for our, 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 on, our switch on loss, and we have one for the switch off loss. So we can, we can obtain a, a loss for switching. And I wrote our switching period in a reciprocal form using the switching frequency F instead of capital T sub S. And as you can see, if we increase our switching frequency, we will increase our switching loss. The total loss for the MOSFET also includes the conduction loss. And recall from the past video, the conduction loss for the MOSFET was equal to the conduction current times the drain to source resistance, I have to square the conduction current, times the duty cycle D. The conduction loss is dependent upon the duty cycle, whereas the switching, frequent, the switching loss is dependent upon the switching frequency and how quickly we can turn the devices on and off. So let's review the key points. Uh, in this video, we showed the average switching, in this video, we showed the average switching loss was dependent on the turn on and turn off times. It was also dependent on the switching frequency. Higher switching frequency resulted in a higher average switching loss, whereas the conduction loss was only dependent upon the duty cycle. So that kind of formulates all the losses we need for that DC to DC converter. In the classroom period, I think I'm going to work on some some numeric examples on how we can put all this together and help with the design of a DC to DC converter. Thanks for watching.